Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about predicting stress relaxation behavior of thermoplastics. Specifically, how can you figure out what's going to happen with a really long-term stress relaxation response of a soft thermoplastic like a PTFE? So on the figure here, I, I have data. I did a tension test of a PTFE and I held it constant at 1% strain. It's a very small strain, but we'll see that the, the stress relaxes a lot from about four and a half um, megapascals down to less than about two and a half megapascals in a about 1500 seconds and this is the the rate of relaxation on the right the question really here that i want to talk about is what will happen at longer time scales what is really going on with this material how far will it relax over an hour a day a month perhaps how far can you extrapolate from this data if you don't have more information? And what should you do to perform this extrapolation in the best way in order to get data that at least is somewhat accurate? Of course, the best thing is to do very long-term tests, but that can be very costly and sometimes not feasible. So I'll talk about some of the mechanisms that you can use here to better understand this problem and come up with predictions that are useful for your work. So, so this is the data that I wanted to talk about. If I'm gonna show a little bit more of the data, let's, let's go back here. This is M calibration. I'm gonna plot one graph and I'm gonna show you all of the different experiments that I've performed on this PTFE. You can see it here. Uh, there are many different tests. There's cyclic compression, tension, there's a stress relaxation test that I just showed and small strain compression. And uh, I calibrated a polyumod 3 network viscoplastic material model to this as well. I might as well show you what that prediction looks like. If I click run once here, you will see that this prediction uh, matches the data reasonably well and mad fitness. So the average error is about 10%. And it sort of fits the data in all different ways, as one can see here. The key, though, is looking at the stress relaxation response. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit how we would address this in this kind of uh, work so i'm going to focus on the stress relaxation load case here this is this one let's get rid of the predictions from the graph so by clicking on this i'm going to select this load case i'm going to right click on it and i'm going to edit experimental data what i want to do is i want to work with this specific load case in a slightly different way so here's the data i'm going to plot time versus stress and I'm gonna get rid of the first number of data points here because I'm gonna focus on the relaxation response. So I'm gonna click on this data point in the graph that selects that in the table, control shift up arrow, which selects all data points before that. And I click delete key and they're gone. And I'm gonna save this new data file. I'm gonna save it as something here. I'm gonna call it relax.txt and uh, I want to also make sure that the time column here starts from zero. So I'm making it zero by clicking in the time column, clicking make column start from zero. I'm going to have to uh, save this again uh, just with this modification. So I'm going to place it. Sure, here it is. I'm going to clear the table and go in here. Now let's add our new data file that I just extracted, the relaxation segment here. So I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to click this as a stress relaxation load case. I'm going to say uh, this is a relax one. And here it is. Time column, stress column. Well, the stress column is actually three in this case, I believe. So I'm going to say OK. And then it asked me what the relaxation strain was, which was about 1% in this case. And uh, I'm going to click this one here. Now, the C, if you look carefully, maybe I can change the color here on this one so you can see it slightly better. I'm going to make it uh, darker like this. And you hopefully can see it a little better here. This is the relaxation portion. This is a stress strain plot. I want to plot, not stress strain now. I'm going to switch over to plotting stress versus time. I'm going to turn off this test here, the, the complete version of it. Now it's only the relaxation portion that's plotted here, time versus stress. And one of the things that you should be aware of is when you plot a time versus stress like this, it's hard to see what's going on. 
unless you switch over to plot logarithmic time. So I'm double clicking on this axis. I'm going to set it to log scale. And then this is what the data looks like in this case. And this is very typical for thermoplastic materials of this kind. It takes a little bit for, before much changes in the stress, but then the stress decreases in magnitude, almost linear on the log scale when time is on the log scale. And that is the traditional way you see. So if you were to extrapolate uh, in this case up to longer times, you would actually extrapolate on a log scale for time. So I'm going to change the graph a little bit so perhaps we can see. So for x-axis, I want to go show a little bit longer time. They're going to go to 1e5 seconds, perhaps. And then I'm going to do like this, maybe. And then I go to the y-axis. I'm going to go from a minimum of 0, maximum 5, and apply. Let's see. Um, and calibration is a little picky when I apply these limits. It's right to be smart. So I said zero, but I didn't actually make it zero. I made it two. So if I really want it to be zero, which I do, I'm going to unselect the, this one. I select axis limits to be simple. So if I don't have that, then I will force it to go from zero to five. This looks a little funny now. So I'm going to change um, the number of labels here to make it look, look better. So here is a, a different plot that goes from zero to the max time and over to 10 to the five seconds. We can go to even larger times if we like. But that's how you would be able to sort of predict. Uh, so 10 to the five, I would think that the stress will be about, uh, what is this, one and a half. That will continue pretty substantially to relax even at longer times. We can also now use our calibrated material model. We have the three network model already calibrated here. If I try to evaluate this, We'll see what happens. And here is our evaluation. It goes a little too high initially, but, but we have fixed limits, so we don't see that. But then the relaxation rate looks fantastic. What's kind of cool now, we can also use M calibration to extrapolate to larger times using this particular material model. So I'm going to create a virtual load case here. Um, that goes to even larger times. So I'm going to switch to experimental data to a virtual load case. I'm going to load it up to 1% strain, perhaps like this. We'll do it in high rate. And then I'm going to add my relaxation segment. So how do I do relaxation in a virtual load case? Well, the strain rate is zero. There is no strain change in strain. And I want to hold that strain rate zero for, in this case, one E5 seconds. And um, to get this kind of work better, I usually specify the, the time incrementation in a different way when I have such a long relaxation time. The minimum allowed, maybe this, the maximum allowed is one E3. So that will make it at least 100 increments. And the initial will be 0 0.1. So gradually increase the time increments. And this I'm going to call it virtual relaxation how about that let's see let's see if we can change the color perhaps to something that's easier to see all right here we go and let's going to run this load case here and now we'll see that we have this initial load up portion of the three network model but we can also see that the three network model continues to relax just like that we would expect the stress relaxation to occur. So in this case, the three network model is, is a robust enough model. The equations have been formulated in such a way that the rate of relaxation is following this kind of response that's typically what one sees experimentally. So this will be a way to predict the long-term relaxation behavior of the part, even though you didn't have a really long relaxation experiments. It's always better to do very long relaxation tests if you need to predict that kind of response, but sometimes that's not feasible. And then the approach I'm talking about here, I think will be valuable for you. If you have any questions, uh, just ask them below.